Hey guys, this isn't really going to be a normal lesson this week because with everything going on, I couldn't really do another lesson with screw tape letters and I know that's kind of crazy. We were on our last lesson, but I kind of felt like this is something that needed to be said. And so I'm just going to say it. I'm not even really sure what to do or how to do this, but I have some things I wrote down. But I'm going to try my best to do this. You know, with everything that's been going on, I have been praying and asking God, what do I do with this? Maybe you've been asking the same question. What, what is it that I am supposed to do? Um, there have been a lot of horrific things happening and a lot of things being said. And I look at this stuff and I ask, like, what, what is it? What, what, what am I supposed to do? Um, and then everybody's got lots of opinions on that. But I, I want to share with you guys kind of what I'm doing and what I think, at least for now, what I need to do. And maybe that will help some of you sort through your thoughts as I've been trying to kind of sort through mine. A few days ago, um, I was talking with my wife, and I just said, I mean, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to even begin. I mean, I can't build new schools. I don't have that kind of money or training. I, I can't, heck, I can't rebuild basic stuff, try to fix things in my house, and they just fall apart. I can't, you know, I can't become a police officer and try to live uh, and do the job in such a way that maybe might help a particular community. I mean, look at me. I, I, who's going to respect me on the, in that kind of situation? I can't, I can't make political uh, suggestions. And even if I did, could, I, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I, I, can't, I can't do the protest thing. Um, because at this point, I, I haven't settled in my mind what it's about. And, and I know some of you might be kind of angry hearing that, and that's, and that's, that's okay. I, I'm not trying to, to say one thing or another about that. What I'm, I'm really just trying to say is for me, I, I, need, I need a little more um, for that before I go out and put myself out there on that kind of thing. So, but that's just me. And I don't want to be the kind of person who just puts stuff online, changes my picture, puts a sign in my yard, and then feels like I've done something to make the world a better place. And again, I know that's probably going to offend some of you, and I don't mean it to. I'm just telling you what I was thinking, and that's, that's what I was telling my wife that night. I said, so what am I supposed to do? And so I said, you know, what if I just go downtown, and find places that are that have been tore up by the rioters and and try to clean up and just try to help i can do that and it's not much but maybe i maybe, maybe it'll help a little bit and and if i do that then maybe i'll see something else that i can do and so the next day i went online i started looking trying to figure out okay where stuff's happened is there stuff being done and i couldn't really find anything very clear and, and to be perfectly honest, like I didn't want to just go downtown and start wandering around um, because that might not be the safest thing for somebody who looks like me. But while I was doing that, I got an email from Wheeler Mission. If you don't know what Wheeler Mission is, it's a, it's a homeless shelter and recovery program uh, Christian group downtown Indianapolis. They do a lot of good work. They've helped a lot of people. And they said that, you know, they were actually finally supposed to be opening for volunteers to start coming back after the lockdown this week. Um, but they had sustained some damage to some of their facilities from the riots. Um, and so they kind of were limiting some of their volunteer um, opportunities. But if there was anybody who was willing to come, they would really appreciate it. And I thought, that's it. Got it. They need people to serve lunch. I'm there. It's not much. It's not a big deal. But it's something. 
And who knows, maybe, maybe just maybe, if I spend a couple hours serving food, the real workers down there will have more time to do what they need to do, helping people. And you know, I wasn't even sure I wanted to talk about this because really what I wanted to do was I just wanted to do this thing. I didn't want to post about it online. I didn't want to take a selfie. I didn't want to go and make a big deal of it. I just wanted to go, I wanted to serve, to help maybe just bring a little bit of light to a, a dark situation. And maybe God might lead me to do something else because maybe there might be something bigger that happens because of what I did or maybe he might show me some, the next thing that I should do. You know, that's one of the amazing things about God, really, the fact that he can take like just a little bit of something like that, a little faithful step like that, and he can make something a lot bigger of it. And again, like I'm not, I, I, I even saying this, I kind of feel like I'm bragging. Uh, that's not, that's only, I, mean, I put salad on a plate and a bun, did that for two hours. <laughs> whoop de doo you know. So anyway, I signed up, went downtown, got to the, got to the location, got to the men's shelter uh, where they were serving lunch, walked in the door, forgot to sign in, brought my mask, got all decked out. I mean, there were three other volunteers there to help serve. And it seemed like it might have been kind of a slower day, although at the same time, I don't think lunch is like their biggest, is biggest time. I think actually they, they, they actually probably need more help at dinner time because they asked me that, like, are you going to help out with dinner too? And I was like, no, I, I don't think I can. Um, but I can do this, and so, so here I am. And uh, there was another gentleman there who, uh, he was like a, a regular volunteer. I can't remember the term he used, but basically he's kind of like a volunteer liaison or something or other, and he, um, he was kind of talking to us about, like, this is what Wheeler does. Do you have any kind of questions? And, and, you know, we did some kind of talking about that kind of stuff. And, and I don't even know how it happened, but... Um, while he was talking, like he just went on this huge rant about how much he hated Donald Trump. And I wasn't prepared for that. I probably should have been. But it just made me so angry. And, and it's not because I'm some gigantic Trump supporter. It, it, that's not it at all. It was more because I kept saying to myself, like, God, I. I didn't want this. Like, I was tired of the people ranting, ranting online about everything that they hate. I just wanted to come down and try to do something good, even if it's just serving food for two hours. Actually, it was an hour and a half now that I think about it, but whatever. And I just, the more he talked, the more angry I got. And I almost just, took off my hairnet and my apron and just threw it, wanted to just throw it down and just wanted to storm out because it's like I didn't want, I wanted to leave the politics behind and just do something good. That's it. But I didn't. I stood there and I listened. I asked a couple questions. I even offered my own opinion on a couple of issues. <laughs> I hope they asked me back. Or not ask, let me come back. It, it wasn't that big a deal. And at the end of it, after everything was over and food had been served and everybody ate, cleaning up, um, that guy said to me, he said, hey, I appreciate you coming out and I appreciate your opinion. I said, well, I really appreciate your honesty, thank you. And I don't know if he was lying or just saying that as a line. I don't, I don't think he was, but you never can know. But I do know that I meant it, that I did appreciate his honesty. And as I was driving back to the church, I was like, man, what, what do I do with this, God? Like, please tell me. Like, what am I supposed to do? What, what, what do you want me to see? Like, what are you trying to tell me? Is there something? So I get back to the church. I notice over in the pavilion, there's um, some ladies from our church are um, they're having, it looks like they're kind of having a Bible study lunch kind of thing, and it looked like it was kind of over. So I walked over there, and I started chit-chatting with them, and it, it was pretty normal stuff, you know. It was, 
you know, hey, I'm, you know, how are you doing? How are your kids? Oh, the weather's nice, you know, and, and it was a very nice day. Yeah, that day, it was, it was really nice. And I know for some of you, the, like, that kind of stuff just makes you cringe. Like, you hate that kind of stuff. But honestly, in a crazy world, sometimes a little mundane is, is really nice, at least as far as I'm concerned. So I got done talking, and I went back to my office, and I sat down, and I thought, okay, why was that so easy? And talking with that guy downtown, so hard. And I sat down, I was trying to finish my script for the next screw tape letters lesson, and I could not do it. I mean, I tried. I mean, I, I got a bunch of stuff written, and you know, who knows, maybe it'll turn into a good lesson next week. But I just couldn't do it. So I just kept praying and kept thinking, God, what am I, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do? And even that night, like I got home and had dinner and put the kids to bed, and uh, my wife was taking a shower, and I was doing my... Bible reading and prayer time, and I couldn't, I couldn't even focus on reading the Bible. I, I couldn't focus on my prayers. I just kept saying, God, I'm sorry. I can't focus. Like, what do you want me to do? Please, if you just tell me what to do, I will do it. I don't care. Please just tell me what I'm supposed to do. And a passage of scripture kept coming to me, and I couldn't let go of it. And so, I ah, left my Bible over here. Luke chapter 6, verse 32. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Now, I'm not going to claim that God spoke to me I'm not going to claim that I had some huge revelation. All I'm saying is that that idea kept coming back to me. If you do only good to those who love you, what good is it? I think sometimes in the church we have a tendency to look at that passage and we think mainly of situations where like, we're under persecution. Like if somebody's beating you up or harassing you or treating you badly because you're a Christian, that we should still continue to love people like that. And while that is very applicable I feel like in the church we kind of need to hear that we need to love those with whom we disagree and there might be a little bit of proof texting there uh, that's not what I'm trying to do but like we've kind of come to this place where like, like we can't even love our brothers and sisters unless we completely agree on things and that's not good. You know, that guy who went on a rant made me mad because he messed up my plans, my plans, for trying to do what I considered to be something good. And I realized later that how ridiculous is that? God didn't tell me to go love only those I agree with or who agree with me. He just said, go and love everyone, even those who hate you. So if I can't even love a brother in Christ who disagrees with me on some things, or even if he doesn't love me, what good am I? You know, there's a, there's a YouTuber I like to listen to. He's a former lawyer, and he likes to talk about arguments and things. And he put something on his Twitter that said, you know, free speech is a two-way street. And I, uh, I don't know if he was quoting somebody, but I had a, a family member ask me um, about something that a friend of theirs said that, that kind of upset them. And 
I actually said that to them. I said, you know, free speech is a two-way street. If you want to be able to say what you want to say, you're going to have to accept the fact that you're going to hear some things that you don't like. How much more important is that in the church? Because i got to tell you guys, like, if we can't love our brothers and sisters with whom we disagree on some things, we might as well just close up shop. Like, I've known people in the church who've left because there were people in the church that they disagreed with politically or spiritually or, well, I was going to say spiritually. That might be maybe a little much, but you, you get what I'm saying. And if we can't show love to our brothers and sisters with whom we disagree, why would anybody expect us to do that with people outside of the church? So here's what I want to leave you with. I want to start loving those with whom I vehemently disagree with. And I would like you to start doing the same. And, and, don't, and don't use the cop out of, well, I love them, but I don't like them. That, you know, that, that's such a bunch of baloney. I've used that excuse myself many times. Heck, I've probably preached it. But how can you love somebody you don't even like? Because if you don't like them, you're not going to actually act on your love. And what is love without any kind of action? That might be an oversimplification, but, but really we need to make sure we kind of get beyond that a little bit because I don't see any compromise in this passage on that issue he didn't say it's okay to not like people but make sure you love them he just said love your enemies and he gives a whole list of things of how to love them like lending without expecting any kind of return so i'd like you guys to think about Who is it that makes your blood just boil? I want you to go out and try to love them. Don't make excuses. Don't explain why. Go out and show them some love. I mean, Jesus died for me the awful sinner that I am. And every time I sin, it's like I'm putting the nails in his hands or I'm spitting in his face, yet he still shows me love. So how could I deny that to another person who just disagrees with me on politics? Guys, this isn't going to fix the world. I'm not trying to. But we do as Christians need to start living out the call that we've been called to. And we're going to do it imperfectly. And it, I don't have answers for this stuff still. I'm still praying about that and working that out. And, and I'll tell you this, like, I know some of you might be tempted to like want to discuss some of this, this kind of stuff in like comments or on the Facebook page or whatever, but like I don't want to do that because honestly, like that's part of the problem is that, that we're basically seeing people as only a series of posts that like when you actually even get to see the person in person, all you're thinking about is the last five things that they posted on. And that's not good. So if you do want to talk with me about some of these things, like, I'd be happy to talk with you. We'll, you know, direct message me um, and we'll set up a time when we can talk like face to face. And if you're too far away that we can't do that, like, I'll be happy to you know, set up a time to call you on the phone. But I don't want to just be a series of words on a screen or a series of memes, which I know I post those. I, I try to keep that stuff mostly light, but I know I probably messed up too. I hope you hear my heart on this, what I'm trying to say. 
I'm not trying to justify evil in, on any side of this. All I'm saying is what I figured out what I need to do for now. And maybe, maybe that'll help you. So, that said, I love you guys.